Hello again. Over 50 years ago, I applied for several jobs and was advised that unless I got my hair cut, then the prospective employers would be unlikely to offer me a position. Now, hard as it might be to believe these days, at that time I had shaggy shoulder length hair and many offices required staff to have a short back and sides. Was this unreasonable of the companies? I don't think so. I liked having my hair long. It was in a way a part of my identity at that time. But I knew that it meant that I was likely to be targeted by the police being stopped and searched. And I was also well aware that many employers looked askance at those men whose hair made them look like hippies. Let's face it, this was a choice I made. In the end, I chose to have my hair cut and found things went a lot more smoothly for me. Why shouldn't an employer be free to dictate the appearance of those whom they wish to engage as staff? It sounds quite okay to me, and even at the time, I knew perfectly well that it was my appearance which was working against me. Today, of course, that has all changed, and even having a dress code for employees is liable to be seen as racist. In the description to this video, I give a link to a news item about a fellow called Gerald Jules. By the by, I must at some point do a separate video about this strange predilection of Caribbean parents for giving their children names with lots of J's in them. Jamalius, Jermaine, Jamina, Jarell, and so on. I have always assumed that this is because the Lord in the Rastafari religion is called Jar, but I might be wrong about this. Anyway, I digress. Jarell Jules applied for a job with the Ritz Hotel as a dining reservation supervisor and was sent a document specifying that employees meeting the public should not have unusual hairstyles, including spiky punk hairstyles or afros. Quite right too. Why shouldn't a hotel be able to say how they wish their staff to look? Anyway, Jarell Jules took grave exception to this and refused to attend the interview, claiming that this guide to appearance was racist. Of course. He said that, it's about inclusivity and black professionalism. My own feeling is that a little more professionalism might have been shown by accepting the policy of the hotel and ensuring that he showed up for the interview looking smart and tidy, as a potential employer required. As I say, I faced exactly this same situation as a young man, and until I went off and had my hair cut, many jobs were not open to me. That's the way of the world and has nothing at all to do with racial discrimination. I may be doing Joel Jules an injustice, but I cannot help but suspect that this is something of a setup. That is to say that he wasn't really after this job at all. Let's face it, if he really wanted the job, then his hair wasn't really in some big afro or anything. The thumbnail to this video shows what he looks like. His hairstyle is not at all what the Brits meant by an afro. They meant some great bushy head of hair, as I'm sure he knew perfectly well. I wouldn't be at all surprised uh, if he heard about this policy and chose to test it out by applying for a job. This kind of game is quite common these days with gay couples trying to book a double bed in a and b run by devout Christians and so on. In some ways this is the age of the agent provocateur and this looks to me to be a case of this kind. Try as I might, I cannot think of any good reason why an employer should not be able to tell staff that their hair should be a certain length or not dyed pink, or done in a mohawk style, or something else too obtrusive. I honestly don't think that race enters the case. In the description to this video, as usual, you can click on the link and read all about Joel Jacobs and his uh, worries about hairstyles.